everyone, welcome back to the PhD tab. This is part three and the final part. This isn't going to be the last video on Think Thursdays, but it's just the last part of the Q&A that was done with the Lit Scholar. But of course, I'm open to answering any more questions that you may have about my PhD in other videos. As you can see, the background is a bit different. <laughs> this is in my office. So when I talk about going to the office and eating in the office, this is where the magic happens, all the work, etc. So I'm just gonna jump straight into the que remaining questions, gonna answer three questions today, and I hope you enjoy. So the first question is from 1DGSM Mabino21, and she asks, what program are you studying? Why are you studying that program? And what university are you going to? So, this is quite strange that I've done an entire time without saying what I really do. So I do uh, climate finance. It's a policy side, not the finance aspect of it. So quite just give a background, climate finance is about financing climate change adaptation and mitigation, but I am focusing mostly on the original definition, which was assisting developing countries. So funding from developed countries to developing countries to finance climate change adaptation and mitigation. Why I ended up doing that? So I am from the Caribbean, St. Vincent and the Grenadines to be specific. And climate change isn't just an issue that we think about, it is what we're living currently. So there's lots of disaster. And so if you paid attention, you would have heard about Puerto Rico, Dominica, etc. being severely impacted by hurricanes in last summer in September. And this is only going to get worse, it's going to get more frequent. So I, so for us, climate change is a big threat and a risk and we need to adapt to make sure coastlines etc are resilient in our buildings because it threatens life, agriculture and our livelihoods. So that is to answer the second part. Um, that it was more of a personal motivation for me rather than just a subject area because I was moving from mathematics and engineering and now I've moved into policy because I want to do something for my country and my region. So that is why I am doing climate finance policy. And to answer the last part of your question, I am doing it at Imperial College London, as you can see by this really bright lanyard. So I'm doing it in the Centre for Environmental Policy at Imperial College London. And why did I choose this university? So I did two master's programs prior to my PhD. First one in hydrology and water resource management and the second one in climate change management and finance. And both of these were at Imperial. The first one was in, was in civil and environmental engineering and the second one in a business school. I ended up staying here because one um, location, I, it was somewhere I was accustomed to, it was somewhere that I knew I liked. And considering that I'm going to be here for three to four years, it was ideal for me to choose somewhere that would be comfortable in that sense. And two, because of my supervisor, so she had put out a project and that is how I found out about her. That is how I kind of geared myself towards doing client this, this particular area. Mind you, when I did my career planning essay from my business school application. In my five-year plan, I did say I would like to pursue a PhD in climate finance for water resource adaptation. That was me merging both of my masters, but it's, it's slightly different now. Uh, so yes, those are the reasons. That's why I'm at Imperial and it's a really well-ranked university for natural sciences, engineering and medicine. So those are three reasons why I'm at Imperial. Now the Lit Scholar asked two questions. One, what is the funniest thing that has happened to you since starting a PhD and what has been the most awe-inducing moment? The funniest thing. Um, okay, so I have locks and one day I was having a meeting with my supervisor and it was, it wasn't a bad thing, it was just kind of funny. Um, but she was so mesmerized, also taken aback by the locks themselves. So I have some bleached ones on the ends and and I had it in a bun and she's like is that your hair and I said yes and she's like really so how does it form and I had to explain and then she looked at the um she looked at the bleach lock and she said so you can dye any color so like because I had it on a burnt orange um jumper and it kind of fit the same color she said so you could dye any color I'm like yeah 
she's like, so you could dye green and red for Christmas and put like stuff in your hair. And I was like, uh, maybe not that far. <laughs> so that was something funny. Uh, something else is, I am not an expert. Uh, people think because I'm doing climate finance that I know all about finance. Sorry to break it to you guys, but I'm not. So the other day on my class, my office mates, he was like, oh yeah, I, t I told people person and I told person if they need anything with finance, check you. I'm like, don't check me, it's all a lie, guys. I'm not an expert. <laughs> Taking three years to be. So uh, that was kind of funny. That's how I told my life. That was kind of funny to think that people think I'm a finance expert. No, I'm a mathematician slash scientist. I'm very into policy. It's just the name. Uh, yeah, so those are two funny things. And the most inducing thing, uh, I think there, was, uh, there were two really. Um, so I'm sponsored by the Commonwealth and we had a welcome day event. And um, at that event, I was able to meet the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, which is uh, the Right Honourable Patricia Scotland. She is such a powerful woman. She's such an amazing woman, a black woman. Um, such an inspiration as well as somebody to look up to, uh, a role model. She's, she's the first female to be appointed Secretary General of the Commonwealth and also the first black female to be made Queen's Council in the UK. So it was like, wow, to speak to her. And when I spoke to her, she, she's from Dominica, so she's from the Caribbean as well. And then she asked me, what are you studying? And I told her and she, she, she grabbed me and she was like, yes, yes. I said, climate finance, she's like, yes, yes. We really need this. And it was just a reassurance that, you know, I'm not wasting my time doing something that I love, but something that is also needed and would help other people around the world, not just in the Caribbean, but other developing countries and the Commonwealth as a whole. So that was an awe-inspiring moment. And I guess the second one was I recently did a lecture, so I had to give my first lecture ever to students. I've never taught before. I've done normal presentations. Um, and in that moment, the, the kids asked, well, they're not kids, the students asked a lot of questions. And I was, it was very interesting to be on the other side for once, because I was just in their position last year as a master's student. And it's just like, wow, life takes you in so many different places and you never know when it's your time to do something. And it's just that they were so receptive. They even clapped at the end. So it was like, oh yeah, I didn't do it too bad. So that was, no inspiring moment for me so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already for more content about fitness about my phd and post phd related content I'm almost every thursday if deadlines don't get in the way and other things lifestyle fitness on sundays so if you're interested please subscribe and thanks for watching and see you next time